Hi there, welcome back to another walkthrough. This is Mr. Sand, and we're going to be talking about the second topic in our work energy and power unit. It's called Force Applied at an Angle. So, we know that work can be positive and negative, and I hope you checked out that video by Walter Lewin, that old MIT German physics professor. You don't need to pay attention to the calculus or the um, conservation of energy which is kinetic energy and potential energy, uh, you don't need to worry about any of that. What you do need to worry about, though, is when he's talking about positive work and negative work, when you have a force that's going with the motion of an object, well, that's positive work. When it's going against the motion of an object, it's negative work. So if you have, um, let's just have a, a, a box right here being pushed along this horizontal surface, if that force is applied in the direction of its movement, then that is positive work. If it's, if there's a force that's going against this motion, let's say it's moving this way, moving to the right, let's say that, well, we know what that force would be, it would be friction. So frictional force on this box, it's going to be smaller than that force, that frictional force, that is negative work. So that does negative work. It's a force applied against the motion of an object over a certain distance. So most forces aren't exactly perfectly aligned with the motion of that object. So for instance, this force right here, if you apply a force to a box, you're not always pushing it exactly um, parallel to the surface that it's traveling. You probably are pushing a little bit down on it or maybe pushing a little bit up on it. So your force is actually a force like this, maybe. It's a force maybe up a little bit more like this at an angle. So the motion of this box is going this way. Um, this is your applied force. So the movement of the box isn't upwards at all. So that force that you have in this vertical direction here, so if we decompose this pink vector into two vectors, which would be this vertical vector, this applied force in the y direction, and the applied force in the x direction here, it just so happens to be the same length as this f right here. I'm just going to erase that f for now. Okay, in this x direction, so I'll, I'll say this is applied force in the x direction. The only thing that really is in line with the motion of this box is the applied force in the x direction. So this is the only component of this entire um, vector that we'd have to worry about here if we're only going in this one dimension over there. And that's all we're going to be going in for these problems. So we have a nice formula that will get us this component every single time. Now we can reason this out because we know that work, uh, let me use a different color, work equals work equals force times the, dis the displacement, right? Force times displacement. Well, in this case, the force, we can say, well, that force applied, that applied force, is not exactly in the same direction as um, the movement here. So the, the, the force that is really make, doing the work here, there's no work that's being done in the vertical direction. The work that is being done, the positive work that's being done, is only in this x component here. So this is actually, in this example here, and with any example that looks something like this, it's actually F, the applied force, in the x direction. So this right here, how would we figure out what this length of this vector would be? What would we do? Think about that. Well, we'd use trigonometry, of course. So Katoa. So Ka Toa. And we're going to focus on the Ka part of the So Ka Toa. So in this case, cosine of an angle equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. We know what the hypotenuse is, it's the applied force. So the adjacent side, which is the side that we're concerned with, is just going to be the hypotenuse, whatever this is, this force applied. So it's going to be the applied force. So it'll be the force that's applied here. I'll put, I'll just use F right now, but actually I'll put, 
applied force for our example. And it's going to be cosine times cosine theta, whatever this theta is right here. And that's going to get us our adjacent side, which is the side that we are giving, that is giving us the force. So this is the force that is doing the work for us. That's the force that we want to show here, and that's what we do. So if we want to write this formula in a more general form, I would write it like this. And this is much more useful than just work equal equals force times the displacement. So it's going to be work equals force cosine theta times s, which is the displacement. Okay, with this problem, you can do a whole, or with this uh, formula, you can do a whole bunch of problems. I'm going to show you one, and I'm going to give you an example uh, that's not so easy. I'm going to let you think about it. I'm not going to solve it, but I'm going to let you think about it. So let's look at the warm-up problem. The sailor pulls a boat a distance 30 meters along a dock using a rope that makes a 25 degree angle with the horizontal. How much work does the sailor do on the boat if he ex exer exerts 255 newtons on the rope? So, so you have a sailor on a dock. Here's the water. Um, here's a boat. It's a sailboat. So this is how I draw sailboats. There it is. And it's going to make a uh, the rope. I'll draw them brown. The rope right here is going to make a 25 angle degree or degree angle, 25 degree angle, 25.0, I think it is degree, right there. It's a degree mark. <laughs> um, and the force that he's exerting is 255, 255 newtons, 255 newtons. Great. Uh, and he does this for 30 meters along, 30 meters along this dock right here. So the total distance that this boat is going to be traveling here is 30 meters. So that's our S. Our S equals 30 meters. Oh, it's 30.0 meters. So I'll put the sig figs in here. Great. 30.0 meters. Fantastic. Oh, and we should draw our sailman. Sail, sailman? <laughs> we should draw our, our sailor. Okay. And a sailor, of course, has a hat. So we'll draw a little hat. Mm okay. There's our sailor hat. Okay. Great. So... We know we can use this formula. So the force that we're concerned about is is the force applied in the direction of the object. The object's going to be just moving horizontally 30 meters this way. So we need this x component of this force right here, which is 255 newtons. So to find that, we're going to take we're going to do work equals f cos theta times s. Everything's all set up for us. We just need to find the work, so we don't need to rearrange this equation at all. That's perfect. So our force is going to be 255 newtons. It's going to be times cosine of 25.0 and times the displacement, which is 30 meters. So we're going to get, as our final answer in three sig figs, it's going to be 6,930 joules. That's our answer. Okay, great. That should have been easy. I hope it's easy for you. Most of these problems are fairly easy. It's just figuring out how they're pulling in which direction and what's the angle that you need to be concerned with. Um, for some challenge problems, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about a ramp with a box on the ramp. That's a box on the ramp. Okay. And let's say it's attached to a rope. Oh, shoot, I'm going to erase that. This rope is not going to be at that angle. It's, the rope is going to be at a different angle. The rope is going to be like this. I'll show you. So it's not parallel to the slope. It's at a different angle. That would be parallel to the slope. This angle is given to you. Um, and let's say we have a force that's pulling with this rope. So it's going to be like a force pulling this direction up with the rope. 
It's kind of hard to draw like this at an angle. Anyway, that's a big arrow coming out there. And it's not parallel to the slope right here. And if you're given the slope of this huge slope right here, which is a different angle, we'll call that alpha, not theta. I always call it theta. Call that alpha. This is theta. Um, now we've got a different set of forces here. I just want to diagram what the forces are, and then I'm going to let you think about this. So the force, we've got force due to gravity going there. We've got friction probably going against, if, the, if this force is going, if this box is moving up the ramp here, we've got friction going against it. And we also have this contact force, like this, that is perpendicular to the surface of this ramp. Okay. And of course, we've got the force right here, this force, supplied force. Oh, it's hard to write like this. Force applied, yes. Right. So you've got all these forces adding together. Um, to figure out the work, if this is going over a certain distance, let's say it just goes over like a distance that is, I'll use a different color, let's say it's just this distance from here to there, then the friction is going to be working against you, it's going to be doing negative work, this applied force is going to be doing positive work, but only in this, oh shoot, only in this, this component of this applied force. So it's only going to be in this X component on this ramp. So you have to kind of tilt your head sideways to see it. That's very similar to this problem up over here. But it's just this X component of this force right here. So that's the force that's doing the work for you. Gravity, look at what gravity is doing. Is gravity doing positive work or negative work? It's actually doing negative work. It's pulling, there's a component of gravity. You can see what the component would be. The component of gravity would be doing like this. That component right there is doing negative work. So it's going against this positive work. Gravity is doing negative work. Friction is doing negative work. The normal force is not doing any work because it's at 90 degrees from the motion. Okay? So that should get you kind of going here. Um, something else to guide you is um, to think about alternate interior angles. and So you can figure out what this angle is right here, pointing at it the angle between the, I guess you would call it the line that's, I keep drawing this <laughs> line a little bit messy, this this um, line that's parallel to the angle of the ramp and the angle right here, that's this angle from that to the gravity pulling straight down. You'll find that at that angle right there is actually alpha is weird but true I think <laughs> double check that yourself I always have to redraw this again and again and again to think okay how would this actually work yeah I think that works if not let me know and say Mr. Sand you're an idiot I can't believe you thought that okay until next time good luck with these force applied at an angle problems it should be pretty easy for you okay bye-bye